Okay, we started to learn about cells and it's time that we progress a little bit and define operations on cells. It is like with numbers, you start with two numbers, say two and three, and you perform an operation, say addition, and you come up with a number five. So similarly, we want to establish operations on sets that the results are sets. So we have a Venn diagram about three sets that are given. The universal set is the usual, and A and B are given like this. And so there is an operation, uh, there is an operation called, well, I guess taking the union, because union feels more like a noun. So we can take the union of two sets. Actually, this looks like a really rounded letter U, but it's actually called a cup. It's a slightly different shape. So this here refers to the following. A union B is, before I tell you the definition, let me just describe it. So sets are collections of objects, right? Imagine two plastic bags with stuff in it. And to take the union means that you're taking the items out of one set, out of the other set, and you're dumping together into a third set. Basically, you're just throwing in together whatever A and B have. So what set do we get when we throw together everything that A and B have? Well, we have a one. This is where my analogy with the two plastic bags and you dump them together breaks down because this is the, I, this is the same number. So the plastic bags ha have like common par compartments, but it doesn't matter. Two definitely will be in there when we throw together A and B. And then three won't, right? Because three is nowhere to be found. Four is in A, so it's good. Five is in A, six is in B. Again, seven is nowhere to be found. So seven does not make it into the union. And then eight is in B, nine is in both, and 10 is in A. So this is, this is the set that we get when we throw together A and B. And this is called a union of A and B. Now, the other operation is, now just flip, flip this symbol, the union sy symbol upside down, it's called a cap, and that's the symbol of the other operation. It's called taking the intersection. So this here is a set that is called the intersection of A and B, and that is all the elements that both of the sets have. So, so it's going to be a, definitely a smaller set because we just collect the thing that both of them have. So one, no, no go because it's not in A. Two is in both, right? So two goes into the intersection. Three is nowhere to be found. Four is only in one. Five is in both. Six only in B. Seven nowhere. Eight only in B. Nine in both. And ten is only in A. So this is the intersection of A and B. So before we discuss the definitions, let me just point out that there are some nice connections here. So if you look at the Venn diagram, the thing that we already called an overlap, now we know it's called an intersection. It's right here, 259. See, it's much faster if you know how to read the Venn diagram. And the other set, the union, well, when we throw together A and B, you just have to find everything that's in this double bubble. Everything except for three and seven, right? If you look at it, this is two, so we should have eight numbers here. Yep, eight numbers. All right. Uh, interestingly, when we define when we define intersections and unions of sets, you will see that they only differ by a tiny, tiny word. So here is the definition: the intersection of sets A and B is the set such that for all x, x is in the intersection if and only if x is an element of A and B. Now for the union, here is the definition. If A and B are sets, then A union B is the set such that X is in A union B if and only if X is in A or X is in B. So the one difference is that this word from AND changed into OR. Now what does it mean something is in A or B? That means in A only, in B only, or in both. So for our next example, we're going to have three sets, P, Q, and T. U is the usual universal set. And this is going to be a bit of algebra because as you see, P union Q intersect T, this is written twice, but now with parentheses, we make uh, two quite different problems out of it. So how would it work out? Basically, 
parentheses is just like in any other part of mathematics. So this one, here is how we're going to work out. We're going to take P and Q, we're going to find a union, and when we're done, we're going to intersect that with T. Here, we're going to intersect first Q and T, and then we're going to take the union of that set with P. Okay, so let's get started. So first, let's figure out P union Q. Maybe I can squeeze it here. P union Q. So basically, we, we, we should list all these numbers together in one, one set without repeating the double, doubly listed numbers. So 1 is in there, 2 isn't, 3, yes, no 4, no 5, no 6, but 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's the union of P and Q. So now we, we work this one out, that's that. So we're going to intersect these two sets. And just like in algebra, we can carry partial results. 1, 3, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we intersect, the, and we intersect that with T, which is 1, 2, 4, 5, 8. So now for the intersection, we just list the elements that are in both sets. So 1 qualifies, right? It's in both sets. 2 is not in the first one. 3 is not in the second one. 4 is not on the first one. Same with 5. 6 is nowhere. 7 is not in the second one. 8 is good again. And if you look at the second set, 9 and 10 is not going to uh, have much of a chance because it's not in the second set. So this is just a two-element set, one, 1 and 8 in there. Okay, now let's, let's solve the second one. So here we're going to take the union of P and whatever the intersection of Q and T. So let's, let's do that. Maybe I can, we can squeeze it here. So Q intersected with T... Now we're looking at these two sets and we list uh, the elements that are in both. It looks like we're getting 1 and 8 again. Q, not 2, yes, 1 and 8. Right, 3 is not in the second one, 2 is not in the first one, 5 is not in both, 6 is not in both, 7, no, 8, yes, 9, 10, no. Okay, so now we're going to take the union of P and this uh, Q intersect T. P is... 3, 8, 9, 10, and Q intersect T was 1, 8. So it's, now we're just going to throw these elements all together in one set. So it's 1, 3, 8, 9, 10. So when you have unions and intersections in the same computation, you have to be careful because order of operations do matter. So when you have more sets and more operations, you just do one operation at a time. Okay, let's see what's next. Okay, here is our next example. So when we take the union, basically we just throw together all these letters. So A, B, C, K, T, X, Y. I think it's alphabetized this way. So it's A, B, C, K, T, X, Y. This was not very exciting. However, this is a good example because of the second one. What about the intersection? See, they don't share anything. And so this is why we needed to come up with the empty set because we wanted the intersection of any two sets to be, again, a set. And when that happens, when two sets share nothing, have nothing in common, so their intersection is the empty set, they're called disjoint. It's kind of a strange little, it's kind of a strange little topic this is because we finished the new theoretical material, but there are lots of lots of exercises and lots of observations. For example, this is a classic Venn diagram. So the intersection is this, this set, and the union, the intersection of A and B is always a subset of A, also of B. Why? Because what's the definition of a subset? Everything that's in this smaller set is also in the bigger one. So everything that's in the intersection is also in A. Yes, because the intersection is defined that everything that's in A and in B, right? And, and that visually is true because you see A intersection B is entirely contained within A. And of course I could replace this with a B and it, it would be still true. Furthermore, if we follow the same visual clues, then A is always a subset of the union of A and B. Right? It's a, again entirely contained. Why? Because everything that's, that's in A is also in the set that has everything from A and from other sets, right? So, in other words, when we take the union of A and B, we, we lose nothing from A. So, these are kind of interesting relationships. 
also I'm going to let you think about this and my recommendation is make up some examples um, and then have a theory and then test your theory with other examples. So the question is, we have two sets P and Q and suppose P is a subset of Q. What can we then state about P intersection Q and P union Q? This is for you to think about. What happens when a set is a subset of another and we take the intersection and the union of the two? Actually, I feel like going back and say, and the empty set is a subset of any set and everything is a subset of the set of everything, right? So that's a pretty nice little chain of inclusion. Okay, here is another one to think about, but this might be tough. And by the way, there are several different solutions. So find A, B, and C all sets such that A intersection B is an infinite set. So is B intersection C, and so is A intersection C. So we have three sets, and if we pair them up, the intersection of all three pairs are infinite sets. So needless to say, A, B, and C must be infinite sets then. How, and, so same, same. However, when we take the intersection of the three, and in this case, we don't need a parenthesis, because as it turns out, it doesn't matter how we parenthesis. This is intersection with intersection. But basically this, A intersection, B intersection, C, is the set of all elements in all three sets, and that is empty. So find three sets such that these pairwise intersections are infinite, but when we intersect all three, it's empty. And again, several different solutions are possible. Set is the most fundamental concept in mathematics. Set is the one thing we don't define, and then we define everything else in terms of set. And you already heard the word intersection, so I just want to make the connection that that's the same. What is a line? A line is a set of points with certain properties. So this is a set of all points. For example, a circle will be the set of all points equally far from a point in the plane. So again, a set of points. So this line is a set of points, lots of lots of points, and this line is a, a set of lots of lots of points. And then this is the only point that's in both sets. In other words, it is in the intersection. So just like two roads when they meet. So the mathematical word intersection and the common, commonly used intersection, those work together. Those are the same. Thank you for watching.